did this before, but uh, just a quick show of hands. Who are coming to FrontCon? Do you have more? And if if I'm gonna attend this today, you're not not gonna attend my talk, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, the other specification: internationalization in JavaScript. Boring topic, huh? Anything do you know more boring than the title of the talk? Any guesses? Mailings. No, the talk itself. <laughs> but <laughs> let's start with me. I'm on Joel. You can follow me uh, on Twitter or GitHub or, or email me around. Uh, I work on the Node.js project. I'm a core collaborator. I contribute to the JS and Node.js ecosystem. I'm also a maintainer on Electron. I work on V8, EC39. This is because I know about most of this stuff. It's boring to know about otherwise. And LibUV. I'm a student, so I'm still at the university. I don't work anywhere. I was a part of the program, Google Summer of Code, and I'm a speaker, if it wasn't quite. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, so this is what I was going to talk about. Uh, standards and specifications, and actually forensic codes. Uh, but you know what? It's boring. So that, let's just get through this. <laughs> Let's just <laughs> yeah, and there's also proposals. Yeah. No, no, no. So you yeah. want to get chocolate without slides? Yeah, yeah. I, that's it. We're I'm gonna grab. <laughs> yeah, they're going home. But yeah, I mean, I managed to on a Friday evening. I managed to make a group of four enthusiastic Russian teenagers sleep when I tried to give this talk in its full glory. The meetup was inside a bar, and there was free vodka. So let's not talk about internationalization. Let's talk about something better, more interesting. Let's talk about us. Uh, also, if you actually want to learn about any of the stuff that I was going to talk about, the, uh, I found a cool website. It's called MDN. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, let's forget about the talk. It's gone. It's, yeah. Uh, let's talk about something uh, that's cool. Let's talk about software development. And what what the deal about software development is that it's hard. That's why you're here, uh, talking about this boring work stuff and not really like hang out with friends or, or playing whatever. Software is hard, but like software itself is hard. What's harder is building software about things that in themselves are hard. And there's like yeah, it's too much hard stuff. Um, you're fine. <laughs> but currencies are hard. So, uh, you know, Manjula works in fintech, so that's like currencies to an Uber level, but like maybe a few of you work at stuff like online banks or anything related to currencies, and you know that currencies are like hard and, and complicated to work with, right? I mean, Google doesn't get it right. With my free 0 0.00044 euros, uh, or, you know, when you could. <laughs> build your own civic type bar and get it for not number dollars. Or when Verizon emailed me that my bill is past due, I have to pay nothing immediately. They also managed to charge me a late fee because I did not know how to pay nothing. Or companies like Bethesda, like, just how do I pay this? <laughs> or like Spotify, how do I pay pounds? What? what? Is it pounds? Is it dollars? Is it none of those? <laughs> but like, oh, the, the almighty euro dollar. So it's, oh. And this like euro dollar euro. So, <laughs> and, and your users like, shut up and take my money. This is the part we don't screw up. And, uh, there, so there are some people who do it right. For example, if you've tried Google Flights. Uh, I was in Russia before this. Uh, where my biggest feat was, as I told you, managed to uh, get a bunch of kids unexcited about technology. And they guessed I was, I was in Russia, and I was going to use the rubble, and they all pretty much figured out everything why. Same with when I came to Latvia, everything just worked. So talk about currencies. In most of the English-speaking worlds, currencies are obvious. This is how we write them. No matter if it's a dollar, a euro, or a... Uh, Sorry, but a pound. It works. Europe is a bit more complicated. So I mean, you, know, you flip those but like the decimal point, but it's okay. We get it. Ah, look at you, Latvia. 
before 2014, uh, when you oh, actually did your research. <laughs> yeah, but why is there a space? Like, spaces are for something different. But um, it's fine. But then, uh, is it a fraction? Like, no disrespect, but I mean, uh, do I write it right to left or what? And then, yeah, obviously the yen drops the, uh, you know, decimal because why would you use fractional yens for? Like, and Indonesia does something similar, but to the point, like, and, and, and now I'm not even joking, the Swiss people use an apostrophe to use a delimiter, and this is, so in Canada, you can use the dollar format if you speak in English, or you use this format if you speak in French, and depending on if the person is being communicated to in French or in English, you need to write the currency different way. Bam. So, yeah, how do you remember all of these? And this is like, what, 10 currencies? This, oh, God. Thank you. Thank you. So this, this is a lot more. And currencies are really hard. So, anxiety. Let's talk about anxiety. This is what I feel when working with multiple currencies and just getting them to work. And we could fix this. What if we did not have to memorize this, obviously, but also, you know, not have to like include a, a 15 megabyte database inside of our front end applications just to make these things work? What if the language had support for dealing with all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. It exists. And it's inside the internationalization API. So, yes, you have a number, you have a currency, and bam. English, you've got it. French, you've got it as well. And this, there's infinite possibilities. Infinite currencies, infinite languages, and you can just make this work. And not care about how it's represented. You just, like, you have the number, and <coughs> it'll tell you how to write it down, basically. Internationalization, it's not just currencies. This bad news for you folks. For example, let me something, let me, Ah, oh, yeah. Cats. We all love cats, right? But, so you have a cat. You have one cat. You have six cats. And you have 0.7 cats. I, I don't quite know how this works. Maybe you have seven cats, seven, ten roommates, but you have 0.7 cats. Pluralization is easy, right? If it's one, it's singular. If it's anything else, it's plural. You have zero cats, 0 cats, 0.7 cats, but one cat. Uh, let's talk about a different breed of cats. We call them Welsh cats. So they're cats but in Wales. So you have zero cat odd, you have one gat, you have 1.5 cat, you have two gat, okay, uh, you have three cat, you have six chat, and you have 42 cat. Pluralization is easy in English. <laughs> and, and that's just one language, that's Welsh. It has like, what, seven rules for different amounts of things. And Arabic has like six. What are you even doing? Uh, and all languages have weird rules. Some are, are simple, like English, they have single rules. Some have just one, which is like, thank you, German. And some are just weird. And pluralization is not as easy. But the language also allows you to take this with the plural rule API. So yes. So if you think something like English, it's easy. So you just like what? And yeah, you, you won't make a map in real life, you just fetch it from a database or, or a file, but you, you, you can just make uh, an actual data structure in your application to like, oh, if it's one, it's a cat, if it's many, it's cats, but yeah. And using number, the API will tell you to use cat or cats, which is fun, fun right? I mean, it makes no sense for English, it's overkill, because like, for English, it's literally just equals equals one. But for Welsh, it makes a lot of sense. And if you don't know the language, it makes absolute sense to use something like this to, to make your life like easier. And yeah, that's it. That's it. Through rules, you got to make it work. You make it work this way. You don't format, you format cats easily, and you format Welsh cats in a slightly more complicated way. And I don't know how Latvian cats work, but uh, you just have two 
so a singular and plural, so that's better. But yeah, that's multiple languages, you're dealing with that, we got you. So let's talk about something other, uh, with, uh, something else which is interesting. Relative time expressions. Everybody loves them, right? Uh, but nobody knows how to actually deal with them. Like, how to actually print out how much time is left to do anything. And I mean, like, why? I'm just playing a video game. Why do I have to wait days to actually? Is it seconds? It's what? And even Apple's like, yeah, you gotta wait, wait two weeks, five days. And and yes, it's horrible. And Nobody knows how to do it right, but us. So just we've got it figured out. We call it relative time for man. And again, like if you need all the documentation, it's up there and in the end, it's boring, nobody likes to talk about it. But yeah, if you do something like minus one day is yesterday. So how is that? Zero day is today. One day is tomorrow, minus one week is last week, zero week is this week. And everything's cool, we gotta go have a bit. Uh, but calculation is easy. Writing it down, though, is not. And yet, yeah, I'd leave it up to you, your imagination at this point, to think how it works in different languages. And we've built solutions to try to help us do this. I mean, there's MoMA.js. Uh, any, so any of you use any of these libraries at work or for hobby projects? Globalize is really popular, MoMA.js, for dealing with everything related to time. But, yeah, I mean, even if those libraries work perfectly fine, you have to package at least megabytes worth of data with every like, hit to your page, right? I mean, yeah, this uh, format actually just works out of the browser, so you don't like, have to package anything. And hopefully <coughs> the, the library, once this is implemented in good enough browsers, good enough amount of browsers, the library will just drop the, the extra data and just start using this underneath, but so you don't even have to bother about this. But yeah, in three quarters, in one day, and when I switch to Spanish, it's pasado mañana. So that's cool. Even in Latvian, it says Wata for yesterday, it's for tomorrow, it's brief. And I, I won't even try. Uh, but yeah. That's good. We're good with dates and relative times. But what about comparing strings, by the way? Have you tried comparing strings? Uh, anybody tried, you know, doing anything that has anything to do with, like, if, is this string same as this one? And then is this string smaller or greater than this one? Nobody? Yeah. We, like, maybe, maybe it's searching or sorting strings. You'd have to, like, do some of that. And fun part. So in German, the A with the accents, so it's with A. So A and Z, like negative value because it's small. And in Swedish, so it's after. So there's no logical way to reason about these things. And again, there's a actual built-in, which is called Colera, which you can feed in with language to help you with things like that. Imagine the possibilities you're thinking about, right? You, people come up and say, hey, imagine the possibilities. This could, yeah, I have. I have imagined the possibilities, and we have Quite a few built-ins. There's date time format for date and time formatting, list format for actually like printing out dynamic lists. So if you're building a app for like people hanging out, having food together, you can print hey A, B, and C are having food with you, so they don't feel like shit and lonely. Uh, and you have segmenter for actually traversing sentences, uh, not like you know dot split with the uh, period because that's like that sometimes doesn't, doesn't work and there's many more it's all a part of this great standard that we built which is called ECMA 402 it's different than JavaScript but it extends the existing JavaScript language and come help us out if you have any ideas we're listening uh, if you want to help out with any of the test stuff if you want to help out, uh, help flesh out any of the existing standards all years and thanks. Oh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Nobody. It wasn't that bad. I guess it was start. So. Uh...
uh, is it uh, on what kind of browsers is it available at the moment? Uh, uh, it's definitely available in Chrome uh, on, and on Firefox, and there's no browsers there. <laughs> and just get polyfills for this. Yeah, there. Uh, as soon as any, so the the deal with uh, the the standardization format is that as soon as any of these proposals hit stage three, uh, they like ECMAScript, the foundation itself, TC39, launches a polyfill, which is like official polyfill, okay. and the browsers are supposed to like do it a ASAP to like implement this. Chromium is actually usually ahead of schedule. Firefox usually does it in nine. Uh, I won't talk about WebKit. <laughs> Let's just say it's out of the scope of this discussion. But yeah, I mean, because it's like an actual standard, browsers have to comply. Uh, I was actually, so I, for the record, did not build any of these standards. I was just one of the people who were working, I was part of the feds. I was helping make sure that everybody complied by these standards, and if they were not complying, they were penalized. Uh, but yeah. So there's a bunch of tests that nerds write sitting in their room and make sure that browsers actually do implement all of these, otherwise they get like a red card. So is this uh, like stage three or even? Uh... All of these were uh, beyond stage three, so they're in the, uh, and, and there's a couple of really neat uh, features that's waiting in stage three, waiting for, you know, to get official st status. So, like, it's pretty new. There's a lot of work, work happening, and there's a lot of leeway so that we could get really awesome things. And if you're somebody who faces issues while working across regions, you shouldn't, right? JavaScript is the language of the web, and if you, it, it, like, you work for, working for companies, if there's anything that's stopping you from actually, like, you know, expanding pretty much everywhere, then you should, like, it's an internationalization problem, and you should, uh, you know, have, we should have systems for this. Uh, developers shouldn't worry about this the language yet. Why is stage three? Sorry. Okay. So, uh, quick story. Uh, the when you propose something to be added to the standard, it follows the stage procedure. So you stage zero is like just out there. You 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 know hang out with friends and write something down on tissue paper uh, when you've had a lot of beer. That's stage zero, uh, and then you write down on your computer. When the community, uh, so when the committee actually sits down and, and talks about it and starts ratifying it, stage one, when it gets, uh, you know, inside of meetings, it starts being discussed and stuff. Don't quote me on any of this, by the way. It might like be borderline incorrect. But uh, and it gets a champion. It gets an author, which is you. But it also gets a champion from inside the community. Who's like I champion through you through this. Uh, but uh, it becomes stage two, and when it's accepted, technically, it becomes stage three, at, the, at which point uh, browsers have to implement it and have to collect data about how it's been used and everything, just to make sure that everything's perfect. Mm -hmm. And when they use all this data to make sure like, oh, developers are not facing issues and we've, we've got enough feedback, they actually officially add it to the standard, at which point it's there, but it's not going anywhere. Cool. No questions? Uh, how big is the polyfill? You said like moment, like moment is megabytes. Polyfills are more than megabytes. Uh, polyfill, for these things, polyfills would have to be like at least, so because, I mean, you have to have all this like internationalization yeah. data inside of small databases or like small text files or something like that. Because I mean, it stores all the data about all the languages. There's so many of them, yeah. right? Um, what, what, if I, what if I own any currencies? There will be an option to yeah, yeah, get uh, only the polyfill I will... Yeah, the, 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 if you use the, po po uh, well, the polyfill for that particular built-in, then you'll have data only for that. So, yeah. so does that mean that the, uh, the data sets, you expect them to be built into the browsers in the future? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the data sets that are supposed to be built into the browsers, the polyfill just contains that data set. Okay. The exact same data set, but it's like, it's irresponsible to leave them out of the browser. It's like, uh, hopefully everybody should be using them to make you use slide there. Alright, I think that's about covers it. Yeah, awesome.